exhaust bolts here, so we got a nice solid steel plate, and then this is out of a three jaw puller. And a lug nut. <laughs> yeah, so now we can thread it tight, and I can thread this one tight. We're gonna get a baseline now, now that we have it fixtured, and we can replicate it very easily, throw another rod on. So let's figure out where these holes are now. Figure out where the protrusion is. This is still a little short on the distance between the two, but we want it a little bit down. Hopefully it's in the 31 range. I could handle it being a couple thousand shy and call that it, but I mean, I guess I could just go ahead and cut it. I got it fixtured up. I'll cut this one and go shove it in just to see what happens. All right, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Lower it down on here, lock it, kick that up, and let's go for 250. You want to? Is the rod moving? Maybe I'm just seeing things. No, I think it's moving on this pilot. On that end? I don't know. Okay, let's look at that reveal. Uh, it does look like it's cutting more out of the outside. You know what, I'm just gonna cut it. $10 brushing, $16 brushing. I wanna cut it and see where we're at. That's how we combat it over here. I don't like any of it, really. I mean, I put a, that's six, four exhaust parts. I haven't figured out what I wanna do yet. I'm just thinking about it while we're cutting this one. I mean, it's holding it now. Now it's not moving. Yeah. It's solid now, so let's go ahead and chop it out. Man, that looks good. Fill the hole, sand the sides, and then bore at the final size. He said it'll take no time at all, but I'm not liking this. I think we need something a little better. We kind of played with this, ghettoing around for a while, trying to figure out how we're going to do it, and then we finally got it mounted, got that done now. I guess I thought I was going to start cutting because I thought the pilot was going to hold it side to side. Well, okay, so we're backwards now today. Now I need to figure out how I'm going to hold it here. Replicatable. That's pretty good, but I'm thinking that's not. So I want something different for that. Okay, so it's proven fairly difficult. I'm tapping a hole directly down in this cylinder head so that I can put that little bracket on. Baiting on what I'm going to do with that one, but I'm going to go ahead and put a a bolt on this because I just wanted to hold it. That doesn't have to move. Hopefully that'll work. Oh, a pain in the butt. Let's get a tap. Okay, as of right now, that is solid as can be. Figured I'd go two there since it's so close to the block. Couldn't really get much thread, so that can just hold it and that can hold it. It'll be fine. That, that'll hold it just fine. We got threads here to hold it. So I like that. We could replicate that. So now let's go finish this bushing and try it in the engine. So that's what we've been working on all this time. It just works great. It'll work great. It did not work. Okay, so let's remember this. That side over there is now 25. And the closest side to us over here is 35. 34, actually. 25 and 34. That sucks. I think we're decided. We know that we need to surface a little bit off the head, so I might just go ahead and do a surface on it to try to get it closer. Nine thousandths off. <sighs> that sucks. Okay, so remember that. 25 on the right, 34 on the left. Okay, pardon the fan. It's 475 degrees outside, so we got a fan blowing in here. The one I just showed was 10 thousandths off, 9 thousandths. It's still in the engine over there. So it's 9 thousandths off out of this way level, that pilot. I got 33 protrusion is what the old rod was. And now with this setup like this, I can hone that, but I can bore that bushing, a new bushing out and have it done, ready to go in the engine in about seven minutes. 
so that's not bad. So if I have to do it twice, just to ensure that I get the protrusion number right. So with the thought of doing it twice, do I want to go ahead and try and draw out my numbers over there on the tape on the board? Do I want to try to draw this out and guess on how much I need to surface out of that end of the cylinder head right there to surface on an angle to bring this level? See, because that is now, that is going that way. So how would that equate? That would be the deck is going like that. One thing I did not do is make sure that my side clearance was right. Because who knows what kind of, I mean, I Julie mentioned it too. We should go ahead and put both on, but I'm just going to hold it over and see if it changes any numbers. I'm just going to bar it over. We're going to check it one more time. This is not the rod going in the engine. This is just a tester, just a straight up tester. I'm going to hold it over. I'm going to hold it over up here while it's going. There go, zero, 10. 20. That was under, that's 25. Okay, hang on. Made no difference. Okay, so that being across there a little bit is not a lot of difference. It's at 34, so it didn't, well, a thousand, but we're still 20, we're still 10 thousands off. So we'll pretty much call it 35 on this side and 25 on the other side. So if we look at the rod, look at the rod, how it's bolted on there the bolts are going to go to the right. So that would have, in the fixture, I'm going to be looking at the connecting rod like this at the top. So we're cutting through the bore like this. Okay, so the upside of the connecting rod as, it, as it's in the fixture is letting the piston go farther this way. So I am boring it towards the right-hand side of the machine. So to fight that, I need to cut out well, that I, I don't know. I'm going to figure that when I'm looking at the rod on the fixture. But we know that as I'm sitting here and the rod is in the fixture, the side over here needs to go that way. Okay, let's throw it on the... Right back on it. So now... Now I just need to figure out how much we're going to surface off of here. Since so that one is going that way... Yep, that one's pushing it away. So in order to combat that, I need to take the deck and go that way. So how much do I need to surface out of this side to nothing on this cylinder head to make that pilot be straight? The cutter follows the pilot. You know, you'd say I could move the machine over, but I'm going, I'm using the pilot. Okay, maybe if it's 10 thousandths out, I should be able to flip that rod over and cut it the other way and see that 10 thousandths. Problem is I've already cut my bushing out, so now it doesn't fit. So I'd have to guess, which that's just side to side, so. It's quite a bit, I think that's more than 10 thousandths, so it probably won't touch it. Well, let's hit it down and see, I kinda wanna know. Went ahead and flipped this rod over. The fixture works pretty freaking good. I can, I can hand thread these two, and I kind of adjusted that gap right there, there and there, trying to make it about the same. I mean, yeah, this rod is crooked, so I don't really care. It's now turned into an RD rod, that's what it is. Shouldn't cut really anywhere, because it's like 3,000 shy. Oh, let's go a little faster. Let's go back up and clean it up, we'll see where we're cutting at. I just flipped it over, that's all I did. Uh, I think it's all tight, man, I hope so. Here we go. Cut quite a bit out. Should not be cutting that much out. That means we are way off. I'm gonna press this bushing out anyways, it's done. So this will just give me even more of a verification of what I need to do to surface this head. Now I just gotta watch from the bottom, I don't know how far down. There it goes, just see I hate doing that cut it off on the bottom. Here it is cutting the opposite opposite side. Ooh. Hmm. 
touch off on a face cutter down on the bottom here and physically just look, get an idea of how far off it is. Because, I mean, I, I got to take all this apart and put it on the surfacer. So I would like to have a very good idea to how much I'm surfacing off rather other than I'm going to be bouncing the head back and forth off the surfacer and the guide Z just to get it right. That's a that gonna be a pain in the butt. From looking at this as we surface it, you absolutely can see that angle in it. So yeah, I agree. We need to take the left hand side. Let's see. Flipping it over shows the exact opposite. I, I know you can't really tell because I'm holding it there. See how it curves? This one. Yeah, it curves. You can see a taper in it. There, you can really see it. Okay, but that's backwards now. So now that has it leaning back, leaning this way, which goes with the story that we're getting that this is boring like that, which means this pilot right here is leaning that way. Yeah. So I cut this off to nothing. That is leaning that way. And I gotta cut this so it's level. So I gotta cut it. That's the new level right there. Yeah. So this was Julie's idea to get down here and measure this. And we picked a freaking crooked head. I should have checked the surface. 20,000 shy here. So I think what I might wanna do is just surface this thing to head thickness surface to square so I'm gonna go for it and back to well square one damn it okay fine I thought it was seven I thought it was 705 but it's 7 uh, 20 731 so it's only four thousands off from one side to the other so I guess that really wouldn't account for all of it it's close though because we need to cut well, no, it ain't. I need to cut way more out of the thick side. So, yeah, I guess so. The thick side's gonna be down to like 720, probably. Uh, 725. And this one is 730. So it's not gonna be the same when we're even done with it. Honestly, if you think about it, it only needs to move five thousandths. I say it's 10 thousandths, but that's from one to the other. When you move one five, it moves the other one five the other way. So I'm really only five out and we're about five off on the surface. So wouldn't that be cool if our holes are actually pretty good, we just need to true the deck up. I mean, I guess I can make that happen. Yeah.